Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and in this video, I'm going to do my very best to show you everything you need to know and want to know about the Line 6 Catalyst 60 amplifier. Obviously, since it's a Line 6 product, it is a digital amplifier. That means it's chock full of digital amp models and effects and all kinds of other bells and whistles. So let's try to list them all right now. Hopefully, I can remember everything because there's a lot of ground to cover here. We'll start with the amp models, which you select with this rotary knob up here. There is clean, because of course, boutique for your fancy pants sounds, chime, crunch, dynamic, and of course, a high gain channel. Then you've got a boost control right here, which allows you to feed more volume and dirt into the front end of each one of those amp models. Then you have a gain control because, yeah, you've got to have a gain control. Three band EQ here, presence control. It's always great to have a presence control. Like it's like this balancing act between your highs and your mids and the presence control. And you can kind of find different sounds and different settings when you have a presence control. So I'm really happy that they included that. You've got a channel volume and then you have two banks of effects here. The first bank gives you three different styles of effects to choose from. You've got delays, modulations, and pitch effects. You can only run one of those at a time, but each bank has six different versions of those effects in them. Then you have a dedicated reverb bank right here, which gives you another six reverbs to choose from. Master volume. On the back, you have an attenuator. This is a 60 watt amplifier. It gets painfully loud and it holds up clean all the way up. I haven't tested it on every channel because when I tested it full volume, it hurt. <laughs> so I might do that for a few seconds in this video, but I don't make any promises. But it goes from 60 watts down to 30 watts, down to half a watt, and then down to a mute function, which I have it on right now so that you don't hear static from the guitar that's plugged in. You have an XLR output and a headphone output, so you can do direct recording with it or direct monitoring, and you can also change the, uh, the mic and the cab presets on it. So there's a mic and a cab sim on there. If you plug it in with the USB connection to your computer, like I have right here, you can change all those cab and mic sim settings. There is also an effects loop, so you can run effects in the loop. You can also use the effects loop as a powered amp input. So if you've got a floor modeler that you really like or a pedal board that already has your amp modeling on it and you just wanna use this as a powered cab, you can do that. Uh, what else? Auxiliary input. It's got a real guitar speaker in there. It is not uh, one of those full range, whatever they're called sort of speakers. It's not a PA speaker. It is a guitar amp speaker. It's light. I think it weighs like 26 pounds or something like that. Presets, it's got a preset bank in there. It gives you 12 different presets across six banks. So two banks per preset. There's also a tuner function up here. It's a very simple rudimentary tuner on the face here. If you've got it connected to a computer, then you get a full tuner experience with it. But it's a three light tuner up here. So if you're slightly out of tune when you're playing live or just jamming, you can get yourself back in tune fairly accurately with that. I haven't had any issues anyways. All right. I think I covered it all. Ah, oh, there's so much to remember. Let's start playing around with it. See what it sounds like. I'm gonna use my Fender Player Plus Stratocaster here because it's just a smart option for demos, especially an amp demo. It's got a humbucker, it's got singles. It feels great, it looks great. Let's do this thing. <laughs> You hear that? You know what that is, right? It's a drip! They put a drippy reverb in this amp, guys! I feel like they did that just for me, right? Because I'm such a special boy that <laughs> they're gonna put a reverb in an amp just to make me happy. Thank you. 
It does it does a great surf sound. <laughs> That's enough of that. You guys don't want to sit and listen to me play just surf this whole video. So we're going to go through all the other different ant models. Put it on the manual setting here. We'll start off on clean, obviously. Turn off that delay and the reverb. The clean is all the way clean, all the way through the range of the gain control here. But to my ear, it might just be a volume change, but to my ear, it does sound like you're getting more saturation, more compression maybe a little bit with the gain all the way up. Ooh, it, it is a spicy amp. It is loud. That has been on the bridge humbucker. Here it is on the next single. It has a nice personality for a clean channel. It, it definitely can venture into like twangy, high personality, high character versions of clean sounds. And I, you know, I love that sort of thing. Yeah, I like it. Let's check out how it sounds with the gain in the middle there. gain it down quite a bit. It's a lot quieter. It sounds smoother with the gain down. I think the gain is buying quite a bit of bite. I am adjusting the gain right, not the bass control. It might just be that volume difference though, that's playing tricks on my ears. Let's see what it sounds like with the boost hitting it. I like that a lot. That's a fun sound. because of course. And down just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of character. That's where I would probably run it most of the time, just to make it feel like the clean channel is kind of close to the edge of breakup. There's a little bit of character and personality coming in there. But it is still a clean sound. All right, let's move on to the next amp channel. There's a lot of ground to cover here, so I don't want to waste a lot of time. This is the boutique setting. And I'm going to try to dial in 
something that I think will sound good to match it. Something I've noticed with Line 6 products, like I've got the HX Stomp, which I've used extensively, and the Pod Go and things like that, is they, do, they make you work for it a little bit. They give you all these amp models and all these effects and stuff like that, and then they're kind of just conditioned that the preset is dumped on you. You've got to dial it in. You've got to find the sounds that you like. So I'm not going to trust these to just jump on them and all the EQ and everything is going to be perfect for each one of those. So I'm going to try. I'm going to try to dial it in. You know, to represent what I think is what this amp sounds like best to me. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's how I like to dial in the boutique setting. Kind of like throaty, kind of mid punchy, like kind of mid crunch as far as the, the gain and the distortion goes. Let's try it with a little bit of reverb. I guess that's more than a little bit. of the game control now. Yeah, nice and throaty. settings it has this real like kind of like chimey jangly sort of sound now we'll hit it with the boost see what it can do sneaking in there, huh? All right, on to the chime setting. I almost used this amp for my surf patch just because it's so clean and jangly on lower gain settings. It's pretty. Of that gain control. Listen to how clean and glassy that gets with light playing. It's a really dynamic patch.
funky. I pulled that chord a little odd, didn't I? Check out the range of that gain control. That's about the edge between clean and dirty. Like there's some hair on there when you dig in, but for the most part. Pretty dang clean. Let's hit it with the boost. Did I mention there's a noise gate on this? That is like full tilt, blown out drive. And it's dead quiet right now. You can turn the noise gate on and off with the software. Oh, I think you can do it from the front panel too. Yeah, I read that in the manual. <laughs> I don't know how that's going to sound in post, but here in room, like it, it, it's got that big in room amp feel thing going on. It feels like it's tearing apart at the seams being boosted into an already like fully dirty amp. All right. <laughs> Let's check out the crunch channel. Now I want to go faster. I'm taking too much time doing this video, aren't I? pissed off a bunch of ACDC fans. <laughs> Is that how it's played? Sorry, ACDC fans. I mixed a little Link Ray in there, didn't I? That rumble, that punch from the amp, just like punched me in the gut. I hope that sounds as good in post as it does in room. It sounds really nice. Does it sound like this? Or does it sound like this? <laughs> you guys tell me in the comments. There's a little bit of like a nasal high end going on right now that I'm not totally in love with. Sounds like I could dial it out though. 
Gracias. There's a pretty serious amount of range across the EQ controls. Maybe this is a good channel to show that off. So here's the bass control. Yeah, it gets heavy indeed. Honestly, probably too much low end. All right, the middle. All the way pulled out. And now the highs, all the way pulled out. presence control all the way out I think the presence control is the secret to dialing out that kind of like brittle high high mid sort of thing that I'm hearing right now on the neck pickup. It has a nice personality with that lower output neck pickup, doesn't it? Try boosting into it. to the dynamic amp setting. models have been pretty dynamic so far but I, I can hear that there is quite a bit of dynamic range with the gain on this like you can get really glassy with it well then you dig in I 
think they just wanted to throw in another dirty amp and they didn't know what to call it. <laughs> Sounds nice. I like the grit to it. Sounds good. Let's check out the gain range. Enough of that nonsense. On to the last bit of nonsense as far as the amp channels go. Jeez, I've been recording an hour. Hopefully I can cut this down to be a lot shorter than that. Here is the high gain setting. the gain knob. Let's see what happens when we hit it with the boost though.
Was that enough? Was that enough game for all you high gain lovers out there, all you metal folk? Did I get anywhere close to dialing in like a metal sound that metal people would be interested in? I kind of just turned everything up and went wild, didn't I? So anyways, uh, let's get into the effect sounds now. That's important stuff, right? Let's start off with the delays. So there's six different delays. You've got a blend control on the face of the amp and you have tap tempo with this middle button here. If you get into the software, when you plug in with your uh, USB connection there, you can actually dial in a lot of extra settings on each delay. Delay time, delay repeat, subdivisions, uh, modulations, and things like that. There's a lot to play around with because, you know, they're line six delays. <laughs> Now, unfortunately, you have to use two hands to change the delay patches. I'll show you how to do it. You hold down that button and this light changes right here. And now you can use the rotary selector to select between different delay patches. So we're starting out here on, what is that called? The simple delay. And this will be the vintage digital delay. Next up is the tape echo. Analog delay is next. This one's kind of dirty and gritty. Listen to that. It's got almost like a ring mod thing happening. This is the dual delay. And then lastly, the dynamic delay, which is a ducking delay. That means that when you play your note, you don't hear very much of the delay mix. And then as you stop playing, the delay mix kind of comes in and you hear those repeats.
Now to change the bank from delays to modulations or pitch, you hold down the delay button there, and then you use the middle button to click it and it'll change the color. So now it's on blue, which is modulations. We'll go through those. Get it started on the first modulation. It's already there. This is chorus because of chorus. you can control the mix. And the tempo from the face of the amp. Next up is tremolo. I used that at the beginning. Next up is Phaser. I don't know if I mentioned it already, but uh, in the software, if you have it connected to your computer, you can really easily change the effect order. You can change the delay, reverb modulation, so on and so on, before or after the drive section of the amplifier. So if you want phaser before the dirt, you can do that. If you want phaser after the dirt, you can do that. If you want reverb before your channel, you can do that. That's what I do for the surf patch is I've got the reverb before the amp, or you can put reverb after the amp and so on and so on. So let's put it on a dirtier channel here. <laughs> That's with the phaser after the dirt. Here it is before. I like it before, but I mean, after is, you know, pretty intense. Now that I've got the computer open, I don't need to uh, do the two-handed thing to change the effects. Huh? I can just do it from here. I wish I was recording the screen on this. Oh, well. Uh, next up is the flange, the flanger. <laughs> That is with it after the dirt. Here it is before. And I can 
change all the settings. There's so many more settings that you can get into uh, from the software. <laughs> Gonna max everything out. That's a little much, isn't it? <laughs> uh, next up is a vibe. That's with it post, here it is pre. <laughs> You can select between chorus and vibrato with that. Oh, that makes me feel seasick. Let's put it post. Next up is the rotary. This is the last <laughs> modulation patch, and then we'll do the pitch filters. Here it is pre. All right, let's check out the pitch effects. These get pretty wild and I'm glad I have the software open to do pre and post on these because some of these definitely don't work post and some of them might not work pre. We're gonna have to find out. Here is the bass octaver. <laughs> that was pre, here it is post. Sounds really great. This is the growler, which is kind of like an auto filter. Let's try that pre. What am I doing? That's fun though, right? Pitch harmony. I'm pretty sure you can affect this one pretty dramatically from up here. Yeah. Let's 
Let's try it post. Not bad. software you can affect the mix let's go all the way <laughs> different from the pitch harmony I guess the harmony has hmm I don't know that's interesting they seem to do similar things all right octave fuzz now this could get dangerous <laughs> about that one that's pretty nasty and gnarly do you love that sound <laughs> it is in the pre-position right now i don't what will happen in post <laughs> oh man <laughs> that is saggy going to use that creatively uh oh by the way in the software if you're familiar with line six like helix style amps you can get into the software and adjust like the bias and the sag and stuff like that on the amp settings as well all right last modulation then we'll go through the reverbs and then we'll call it a video pretty soon after that i think there's like one more thing i want to try this is called synth string check out the other reverbs man there's so much ground to cover with this amp i'm not even going to get into using the effects loop or power to amp input or anything like that or like the different sounds of the different mics and cabs when you're running direct it gives you a lot to work with all right let's turn up the reverb i'm going 
going back to the clean channel. That is the spring reverb. In the software, it gives you dwell, level, low cut, and high cut. And it also gives you a selection of drip settings, low, medium, and high. Here it is on the low setting. Medium. And high. Next up is the Hall Reverb. In the software, you have decay, pre-delay, level, low cut, and high cut. Turn the pre-delay all the way up. useful for a hall reverb because it means that the reverb is not going to be right on top of your playing so your playing is going to sound a bit cleaner and clearer and that reverb is going to come in as like a wash after it. It's a pretty hall. Chamber. My favorite plate reverbs have this sweet little like syrupy kiss on the edge of like your percussive note. And this plate reverb has that. I'm really glad it has it. I love that sound. and pre. Let's try this one in post. Not that it really matters on the clean channel, right? We're getting into some shoegazy stuff now. <laughs> All right, what's next? I've never known how to pronounce this. Ganymede. Go back to the clean amp sound. This is a modulated reverb. It's really pretty. Last up 
is the Plateau Reverb, which is a Shimmer Reverb. It's got this organ sound to it. in there but this one has a bunch of settings you could adjust in the software you've got two different pitches ranging from two octaves down to two octaves higher uh, you've got modulation pre-delay decay level and tone and whatnot what am i going to do now i wanted to show off what happens when i turn it all the way up just so you can hear that it has clean headroom all the way up on the clean channel i can't speak for the dirty channels if you're turning this all the way up on the dirty channels, like I'm imagining you're gonna lose some headroom as far as EQ goes, but I was honestly really surprised just how clean it stayed when I turned the clean all the way up. I'm gonna get way back over here when I do this because I don't want to be in the beam zone. So that is the channel volume all the way up. recorder so it's not going to sound pristine watt amp i did detect some dirt on that i don't know when that comes in but you i don't recommend turning this all the way up it's plenty plenty loud it's a 60 watt amplifier it's only one 12 inch speaker but that's it it, it moves plenty of air i'll say that i don't think you'll have any trouble with this amp competing against a live drummer or something like that and you've got the line out on the back so you can run straight into front of house and do all kinds of other kind of modern setups with it they have guides here in the manual showing you all the different ways to set it up and there's plenty of them there you go you can study it later so anyways final thoughts i think line six has come a long way when i first started playing guitar and i first started encountering products from line six it was like oh hey here's a spider amp with an insane mode here's you know the original pod bean which is like this funky you know kidney bean shaped thing which was actually a pretty exciting product at the time uh but they've come a long way since all that especially with the helix stuff like i love my hx stomp the hx stomp is a brilliant piece of hardware and just the quality of the amp models and the quality of the usability of the effects and all the other things that they pack into their products and honestly like the length of time that they support their products is huge there's a lot of digital products out there where you have them for a couple of years and then you're not really sure if the product support is going to disappear on you line six has proven that they're in it for the long haul and they're still supporting products that have been out a really, really long time. You think about Helix stuff has been out. Gosh, has it been out like a decade now and they're still building on it? They're still expanding on it? And this is an amp that is built on that architecture of the Helix amps. And I think it's smart. I think the price is right at low 400s for the 60 watt is plenty loud enough. Plenty loud enough. You could definitely compete with a live drummer with this. I mean, you're not gonna blow the doors off a venue with this amp. You know, you need, you know, a bunch of full stacks to do that. But for practice volume, for small venue volume, even for running direct out of the back into the front of the house, like it's lightweight too. It's only like 26 pounds, I think. It's a smart product. 
What do you guys think though? You're the important ones in this equation. Do you like the sounds it makes? Do you like the features it has? Do you like the price? Let me know down in the comments. I wanna see you guys chatting about this because I wanna know your thoughts on this product. But anyways, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me rude and nasty comments. Support us on Patreon, buy a shirt if you're naked. Click all the links. Huge thanks to Line 6 for including me in the launch of this amp. I really appreciate it. So big thanks to those guys. And you know what? Stay grounded. Bye, everybody.